Good day, good day everybody and once again we're back together uh, looking at that uh, 2021 DBE paper that was written in uh, May and June. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed, uh, just be part of the family, just uh, click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted every time that we're posting a new lesson. And by the way, please just tell everyone, you know, how much you're learning. Please don't keep it a secret. I know you guys, hey, you can be very, very, very secretive, eh? Uh, so, um, yeah, for those of you who might need assistance uh, with uh, mathematics or physical science, please, you can uh, just hit us up on our email. And our email address is info at mlungesinkosi.co.za. All right, now let's look at it quickly. Uh, so we're looking at question five. It has a power calculation. I think I haven't done those in a while. Uh, so obviously we'll uh, just learn how to answer that for the exam, okay? Um, right, so they say a demolition ball is used by a crane to break uh, the wall of a building. The demolition ball of a uh, mass 1,250 kgs is lifted by the crane uh, to a point R at a height of 5.8 uh, 5 meters above uh, its lowest point in 60 seconds okay so there they are they are moving it from that point there they are lifting it to this position which is 5.8 meters from its uh, you know default position and they say to you define the term power in words now remember that power is the rate at which work is done okay so power is the rate at which work is done meaning it's work done divided by time so next question they say calculate the average power dissipated by the crane in lifting the demolition ball at uh, to point r um you know when i looked at this question i you know it, it is somewhat uh, concerning and you know of course we should consider what uh, the examiner has in mind but if they don't make certain things clear um you know they they, they shouldn't necessarily uh, um you know uh, yeah, we shouldn't necessarily assume uh, certain things, but nonetheless, uh, there is an assumption that we need to make here, which the examiner did not state clearly. And I do say this is uh, the examiner's, uh, um, you know, fault in a sense. Uh, and the thing about it is that now we would need to consider that the ball was actually moved at a constant speed. Okay as it was lifted nothing was said about that there uh, but nonetheless we would need to consider that now um, otherwise then we'd not be able to answer the question right now uh, if you think um, if we lifted it at a constant speed then it would mean that the only thing that was changed during the lifting of the ball was the position the height okay so it means work was done in actually uh, um, you know lifting the ball so which means it was work done to overcome or rather uh, uh, to change the position which is potential energy so i would say look let's consider that as our initial height and as, as that is our final height so it means that we changed potential energy so i would say well change in potential energy in that case would be mass times gravitational uh, acceleration times the height so the mass of the ball is a thousand two hundred and fifty multiplied by nine point eight multiplied by the height and the height that we're given there is five point eight and in that case to change that potential energy say one two uh, um, times nine point eight times five point eight and i get a value of 71,050 joules okay so that's the change in potential energy that we'd have right um, if you wanted to you could have also said from 0 to 5.8 you'd find that change to be negative okay um, in that case so uh, then to calculate the power because we know that power is work done divided by time the change in time but remember what type of work did we do we changed potential energy 
okay and divide that by time and so in this case it would be that 71,050 divided by we're given the time to be 60 seconds and if we divide that by 60 I get a power um, uh, the power dissipated would be 1184.17 joules uh, sorry watts uh, so those would be watts of power okay so those would, that would be 1184 watts of power right now considering the next question okay uh, now they tell us that the demolition ball is released from point R okay and strikes the wall uh, at the lowest point uh, of its swing uh, they say the ball then moves 0 0.25 meters horizontally okay into the wall um, before coming to rest all right we'll talk about that in just a few right now they tell us define the term conservative force now remember that a conservative force these are forces whose work done does not depend on the path taken okay so in that case um, yeah that's the definition and then they are asking us is the force with which the ball exerts on the um, oh yeah on on the ball is it uh, the wall exerts rather on the ball is it conservative or non-conservative definitely that would be a non-conservative force okay right so um they say state the energy conversion right uh, that takes place during the downward swing of the ball now please remember as it was swinging uh, we had gravitational potential energy there but as it goes down what's happening it's actually gaining speed so it means that it's now losing potential energy but it is gaining kinetic energy so the energy conversion that's taking place is from uh, potential energy uh, so that's 5.5 uh, it is actually converting from uh, potential energy uh, to kinetic energy all right i hope that uh, makes sense right and then uh, the last question they say using energy principles uh, calculate the magnitude of the average force exerted on the ball while it moves into the wall now let's talk about the ball moving into the wall first right so if this is supposed to be a wall so when the ball hits that wall here remember it must have had a velocity and that's what we're going to look at just now in terms of energy principles right but then what does it do it goes deeper into the wall okay so there's the ball going deeper into the wall and it stops okay but when it stops it had already sunk into the wall uh, by a depth of 0 0.25 meters okay which is what was given to us there so it had a velocity here which is what we need to find and but we we do know that uh, uh, at this point here uh, it had stopped so the velocity at this point here uh, in fact the final here would be zero so let's find out what the velocity is now i would say let's find out that velocity by using mechanical energy principles so I'd say, well, at 5.6, I know that the mechanical energy at point R should be equal to the mechanical energy, uh, let's just say, at the wall, okay, when it arrived at the wall, okay? Right, now, remember, it was released at that point with an initial uh, velocity of zero, so it means that the kinetic energy so remember mechanical energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy right um, fortunately we had already calculated that potential energy there that was given okay and we know that when it gets to this point the default position here 
it has lost all that potential energy but it converted all of it into kinetic energy i suppose that's the reason why they asked us the previous question so we know we've got ep plus ek uh, on the wall okay but we know we've lost some of that uh, uh, i mean not some of it we've, we've lost uh, all of that potential energy right so this is at point r now we know that in this case it means at point r we've got potential energy but our kinetic energy is zero because we started with an initial velocity of zero so uh, we already had that uh, potential energy that's 71050 okay um, uh, the kinetic energy was zero okay and in this case uh, the potential energy at point uh, when it went uh, when it arrived at the wall the potential energy is zero remember we are comparing it uh, in this case we're taking that as our default position because the ball would actually remain at that point right uh, plus uh, the kinetic energy so we're looking for that velocity we're looking for that speed there so that would be a half of 1250 oh sorry that i'm squeezing there uh, vf squared so obviously now what we just need to do uh, is just get that velocity there um, okay so i would say okay i get that speed to be uh, vf is 10.66 meters per second okay so what we can do is now we can find out what that acceleration the type of acceleration that uh, the ball experienced uh, at that point actually there is a uh, there is another way uh, that we, we we actually could have uh, done this so I'll, I'll actually show it to you just now um, so I can find out what the acceleration is I think this really sh uh, was a, a long way um, so we can say well look we can find the acceleration there and then find the net force uh, we can say vf is equals to vi plus a delta t okay so um, our final velocity remember when it went in there the final velocity became zero the initial velocity was that 10.66 over there okay um, and we want the acceleration or oh, in fact we don't even have uh, you know that that time um, in fact you know what I would actually ditch this okay uh, so uh, yeah so the one that you would uh, probably just go for is VF squared sorry about that so VF squared is equals to VI squared uh, plus two times a delta x okay so you're looking for the acceleration you'd say zero squared that's 10.66 uh, squared okay all right sorry um uh, that's a very ugly untidy handwriting so that's two times the acceleration but i know that the depth was 0.25 okay so let's find that acceleration quickly so i get uh, so if i square that um, and i divide by 2 times 0 0.25 which is 0 0.5 and i get a value of negative oh that's a huge acceleration that's negative 227.36 uh, meters per second squared i mean it would make sense to stop a ball that big uh, it, it would really take a massive acceleration and then what you would do is uh, i hope you don't mind uh, uh, you know i'll, I'll just uh, move over to this side uh, just to finish up that question uh, perhaps maybe let me not close everything uh, there yeah so what we would do is uh, obviously then find the net force right so i would say well to get the net force it's ma because that's what uh, they were looking for the average force right 
um, the mass is a thousand two hundred and fifty okay uh, so it's a thousand two hundred and fifty and you multiply it by the acceleration which is minus two two seven point three six okay right uh, so I get a value of twenty two hundred and eighty four thousand and uh, two hundred joules uh, uh, sorry newtons uh, of force uh, that would be exerted look I, I just want us to kind of explore the other method uh, just to see how we would actually answer this question um, you know using just strictly energy principles so what we did here is that we used three uh, we used energy principles mechanical energy then we went into equations of motion and then newton's laws right but um, actually if you think about it i know that the mechanical energy is the same so it means the gravitational potential energy at that point should be equal to the kinetic energy at this point here okay so if you think about the kinetic energy the change in kinetic energy out of the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy after so if we consider this to be the wall so the kinetic energy just before the ball hits there should be the one that we got at that point which was uh, 71050 okay we did say it is the same uh, in that case so it means that the kinetic energy here should be 71050 uh, joules now then the ball goes into the wall okay a distance of 0 0.25 meters okay but then it comes to a halt so in this case what should be the kinetic energy at this point here so i'm going to call it kinetic energy final of course because it stops means the kinetic energy is zero there right so i would say well let's use the work energy theorem so the network done is equal to the change in kinetic energy in fact i would really uh, you know recommend that you go for this option than, rather than the first one that I did okay so but I know that F net times delta x okay because I'm looking for F net that's why I'm actually changing it to that F net times delta x the cos of uh, theta is equal to the change now remember my kinetic energy final is zero minus that kinetic energy initial which is minus Seven, uh, 71050 okay so i'm looking for the net force but remember what was my displacement my displacement was 0 0.25 isn't it so that's 0 0.25 okay the cost of now if you think about it the ball is going that way uh, so the wall must be exerting a force in the opposite direction isn't it so this should be the cost of a hundred and eighty okay remember we said this is the angle between direction of motion and the force in question right uh, for those of you who don't understand what on earth I'm talking about please go and watch our videos on uh, uh, work energy and power in fact I would really really recommend that one because it would really make this um, you know uh, chapter very very simple for you okay so we know cost of 180 uh, this would be equal to minus 71050 okay so all we can do are our gymnastics there uh, to find the net force and we find exactly it should be exactly the same answer that we got before okay 0 0.25 times cos of 180 and uh, that would be negative 0 0.25 uh, uh, so that would be a uh, minus 71050 divided by negative 0 0.25 and you should get 284,200 uh, newtons of force 
which is exactly what we got uh, when we went for that method. As I did say, I would really recommend that uh, you, you know, you go for this one. I mean, it was just uh, quick and easy. Went straight for the answer instead of going through all of those tedious and cumbersome steps. All right. So, and that is how you tackle this question here. Okay. Um, please remember the moment when we start talking about pendulums, uh, you know, these are pendulums. Uh, um, you know, things that are swinging. Uh, remember that we, we, we assume that mechanical energy is conserved unless they tell us about, you know, an interruption or, you know, they tell us about a, uh, you know, wind or whatever, a friction, other form of friction that may disturb. Okay. But otherwise, we then consider that mechanical energy is always conserved. Okay. Right, so I hope that you were able to follow on and enjoy that question. And I'll see you guys uh, again next time when we tackle question six. Please look out for it. Otherwise, uh, please just continue to recommend the channel and, you know, continue studying and working hard, okay? And we'll make sure that we uh, hit that, uh, you know, those A's on that uh, final exam uh, that is coming very soon, okay? Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.